I have pretty high hopes for Katowice, guys. I really don't think that uh, you guys have to worry about nothing but Terran dominance. I think that some of the protoses will look good. It's obviously, once more, a real shame that Max Pax is not there. Because with Max Pax, I would be incredibly hopeful. Without Max Pax, I still have some hope for Protoss. But I definitely have plenty of hope for the Zerks. Yes, Terran is good. But I think they can do it. When you have Dark, Solar, Raynor and Serral traveling to an event. I think there is plenty of hope for the Zergis. Mm. Mm. Hero is indeed in Group D. And that means it's going to be tough for him. But it wouldn't be the first time that Hero uh, looks good in a group stage. Uh, I think Hero can do some damage there. Hero beats Maru pretty often. He beat him at the Atlanta as well. I feel like Hero against Maru is often a series where... Maru doesn't look like Maru. There's something about playing Hero that I think he does not really enjoy. And I don't know if it's like the wildness, the craziness, the aggression, but... Maru doesn't enjoy playing against Hero, I think. Hmm. At least in uh, Atlanta, it didn't look very... solid. And then Hero lost the following round against <laughs> Gabe. That was a very fun series, by the way. I watched that on the B stream. It's a real shame that that series was not on the main stream. Showtime pretty much always gets a bad group, yeah, in Kato. But Showtime is very good, and this is, I think, a meta, especially in PvZ, that's pretty good for Showtime. Showtime can do some damage in that group as well. Uh, I believe. I believe in D Mauer. It is time for our second best of three of the day. This is obviously one that I'm very excited for. Our boy, who was memeing in the chat before this series started, Rainer from Basilisk. Against the best Protoss player in China, who defeated Bonnie in his previous round 2 0. A really fun series that I definitely thought about for a little bit. Bottom right side, Platinum Heroes, Firefly. A man who likes aggression and has crazy builds. In the top left side, our Twitch Shed Memer, Basilisk Rainer. Looking good today, our boy's growing up. Looking handsome, the boy is turning into a man. We have mana in the chat as my stream is having a tiny hiccup. Hopefully it's very tiny. Yesterday we had one or two. Why is this happening? All right, is it also my stream or is it just Twitch again? This happened yesterday. I'm gonna go to the, is my, am I still here guys? Because yesterday when this happened, my stream is fine, okay. I will open uh, their YouTube stream. I was watching their stream on Twitch, but it seems that I have to use their YouTube stream. Mm -mm -mm. Let's hope that that one is solid. Okay, so it seems that it also bugged out for some of you guys on my channel. So it doesn't bug out for everyone, but for some people it does bug out. That's very frustrating. There seems to be a minor issue with the Twitch servers at the moment. This happened yesterday too. It is not my internet. It is just Twitch. And then it doesn't happen to everyone, but it happens for some people. So for some people, my stream works perfectly fine. For other people, it just goes to black for a bit. And they have to press F5 and then I'm back. It's not a ruddy issue, guys. It is a Twitch issue. Does Five like Cannon Rush? No, I don't think I ever see him Cannon Rush. He has weird timings with a crazy amount of zealots. Firefly overall is just very aggressive. He's a little bit like a Chinese hero. He does builds that you feel should not work, but he just executes at a very high level that he does make it work very often. And that series against B uh, Bunny yesterday is a perfect example of it. Like his work account is kind of low. He's incredibly stalker heavy. And you would think like this is not a thing. But then he just has great execution on his attack. All the Widowmine shots whiff. And then he just starts killing Marauders with Stalkers. And you're like, oh, I, I guess it is a thing. So, Firefly is funny. Where Max Pax is giving me, obviously, incredibly solid vibes, right? Max Pax is always trying to win by outplaying his opponent. By just picking them apart, non-stop harassment. Firefly is just crazy. It feels like he spins the wheel and he's like, that's the build I'm going to go for, baby. And he often makes it work. Adapting to Stargate is very normal. I expect oracles. We've seen the Void Ray. 
make a bit of a comeback over the last few months, but I don't love Void Ray Thrust. Hmm. Also curious to see what Raider wants to do here in ZVP. He's been pretty vocal about not loving uh, ZVP at the moment, thinks it's very hard. I don't really mind living in an era where Zergs have a tougher time against Protoss. These two Adepts, by the way, could deal some damage here in the natural. Two Adepts is the magical number to one shot. Unfortunate for Firefly that one of the uh, Adepts dies. Otherwise, he would have been able to kill one more drone. So far, it's one. Can he get a second? No. Nice save by Rainer. Very nice save. Who is Firefly? Firefly is the best Protoss player in China. Uh, maybe 18 months ago, I wasn't that familiar with him, but over the last year and a half, he has just looked damn good, impressive, keeps on getting better. And I think at this point, it is safe to say that he is a little bit better than Cyan. I thought they were still very close to each other, but when they played against one another, Firefly looked very dominant. They have very different styles, where Cyan is a bit closer to someone like Max Pax, and Firefly is a lot closer to someone like Hero. Rainer doing a pretty good job in keeping the drones safe. I think losing only a single drone is something he's happy with. Firefly thought there was a tiny opportunity there to get a second drone, but... Rainer cancelled the building and then just morphed another one. You need someone closer to SOS. The problem is, mate, that the level of video gaming is too damn high these days. For, like, these very funny, weird, cheesy builds to work. It can still work once in a while, but you can't really make your way through an entire tournament by rushing DTs, building weird Nexi, etc, etc. Like, it's just not really a thing. People are too good in figuring out when things are not normal anymore. Hmm. Hmm. I am expecting a 2-0 for Rainer, but I would also not be incredibly shocked if Firefly does end up taking a map. Because he just keeps on doing that kind of stuff. Needs to be very careful here as he has opted to go triple oracle and he's gonna split the low HP oracle off. Tries to find a couple drones in the natural but he only gets a single one. I think Rainer is pretty happy with the first five and a half minutes here. What did he lose? Like two drones? I don't think that a man who has one Katowice has won game as 8, has won two home story cups and made it to a BlizzCon final is feeling the pressure for a third series of an online tournament against Firefly. I think that your observation is a little wrong there. I'm sure there are moments where Rainer feels a little bit of pressure, but I don't think this is one of them. I'm sure that he knows he's gonna have to play well. I would love to see the Oracles by the way. Mr. Observer, please. This one Observer was very low on HP. Took a lot of damage. Nice wall off by Firefly. He is going to build the Great Wall of China here with pylons and gateways. I don't know about that triple pylon there, but sure, it's a thing, I guess. I have never seen anybody wall off like that. And I've seen a lot of games on Oceanborn, but I have never seen that. <laughs> I, d just, I don't think you should mistake Rainer's like, movement. Because Raider is obviously a very fast player, and he's very close to his monitor. And that's why it looks like he's moving around a lot, but that's just how he plays. That is just how Raynor brings out the best version of himself. That doesn't mean that he's feeling the pressure or that he's nervous. That is just how he looks when he's doing his best. And obviously this is a big online tournament, so he's going to do his best. And there's a good chance that he's listening to some tunes as well here. Yeah. Maybe some Kid Cudi if he's still into that, or some Drake, some random Eminem or 50 Cent. He's just jamming, mate. I don't think you have to look at him and be like, he's feeling the pressure. Firefly blinks forward with four Stalkers. That is uh, obviously enough to one-shot drones. Gets two drone kills, one in the open and one drone that was morphing into an extractor. He's playing on a 40-inch monitor. No, Rainer plays on tiny monitors. I obviously don't know his setup at the grandma's uh, place, because he's currently playing from his grandma's house, but I think that he just took whatever monitor he had at his family's house and he transferred it. I, I never even know what I have. I think I have 24 inch. 
I believe that people try to make 27 inch a thing. And a lot of gamers have gone 27, but I think 27 is a bit too big for Starker. No, Storm got. I, I do not believe that anybody is holding back. Because A, there are still a couple weeks to go for Katowice. And B, StarCraft 2 is mostly a game of execution. So you're not gonna execute worse on purpose in an online tournament with $17,000 for first place to then execute better offline. On top of that, your execution will always be different at an online or an offline event. So I really don't think anybody's holding back. I, I think everybody will bring their A game and they will see this as their final repetition to make sure that what they believe in is good. Uh, I don't think anybody's hiding stuff or holding back. There's too much money on the line to do that. Firefly has an army that he believes in, but Reyna already has lurkers on the production tab, five of them, and Seismic Spines on the way. This is still going to be a little bit scary. Obviously, a yeah, Storm is in the mix as well. Reyna's supply looks good, guys, but it is going to be hard for his lurkers without adaptive talents to walk forward and burrow where they want to burrow. He is going to try as Firefly keeps on force shooting at the bottom. He's very worried about being flanked, but that's not what's happening at all because Reyna was stacking up. There are Zealots running into the natural, I believe, guys. Yes. Quality is uh, not great at the moment. I will try to improve it soon, but obviously as long as the stream works, I'm happy. Firefly is now on creep. Needs to be a little bit cautious. Dropping extra stargates in the fleet big already. Needs to storm there, I think. Oh, the item plus is so exposed. Rainer is going to go for it with the roaches. And he gets one. The other two morph into an Archon. So out of the four High Templars with energy. Only one of them is still alive. As the man is still dropping force fields. Maybe battle the roaches? I would not want to battle these lurkers. I think he should have walked towards the roaches there. Another High Templar does get picked off. The Archon gets around it as well. It was an interesting push by Firefly. With a lot of spell casting, But it just didn't quite work. I think he was hoping... To go up against a very different kind of build than what Reyna actually ended up doing. He probably thought that this style would be very good against like Ling Roach Bane. But yeah, the, the quick Vipers and the quick Lurkers I think kind of ruined his little party. So that was not it for Firefly, but we have a backup plan. And the backup plan is Triple Stargate Tempest. Why is he getting plus two armor over attack? Not certain, maybe because he wants to build a lot of Immortals and he thinks Immortals deal a lot of damage regardless and he just wants to make sure they stay alive. You can hear me twice? Well, that's on you, mate. That is not on me. I do appreciate it. Let me go ahead and run some ads right now. You get them double. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. Reyna doesn't have too much anti-air here, so I think it's going to be very hard to do something about a Protoss with a Tempest. Reyna might be a bit surprised, but like, wow, 11 minutes in, after all those sentries, all those storms, and Immortals, and Stalkers with Blink, you also have Tempest. And Firefly says, hell yeah, mate. I am a gamer. And I am not a one-trick pony. Hmm... Tempest build a lot quicker than Carriers, and maybe Firefly just felt that he needed something uh, early. Carriers are obviously very expensive as well, and maybe he was worried about them being abducted, and then he didn't have any value out of the Stargate. I don't hate the Tempest in this scenario. I think it's actually a pretty good choice. And after the initial safety Tempest to deal with the Lurkers, as Lurkers have now made it into the main, by the way, we had double drop alert action, or single drop alert action. Two Lurkers get dropped in the range of probes, and now a Nidus is coming online in the back of the main as well. This is really cool play by Rainer. A uh, single Stalker is not going to be enough Firefly. We're going to need a whole lot more. And I hope for him that he has a bunch of Observers, guys. He needs... Ob oh, he has Oracles. It's good too, I guess. Maybe not as good as Observers, but still pretty good. Big fight happening in the main as a tiny fight is unfolding on the left side here. High Templars are in a bit of a pickle, but so far they live. Oracles are just revelating everything. Great crisis management by our Chinese Protoss. I'm very impressed. This could have been hell. But he says, nah, I think I'm fine. A couple of Immortals, a couple of Tempest. Rainer still trying to push the issue over here, the bottom side. Very fun and engaging uh, PvZ between these two. In the end, 15 probes end up falling, but Firefly still survives on five bases. 
And there is plenty to be hopeful of. Rainer now queues up 15 Corruptors as he does have a uh, double Spire. And he's getting Flyer Attacks and Carapace at the same time. So he doesn't care about the Greatest Spire. He just wants to get these upgrades. Absolutely flaky. I totally agree. Whether Firefly wins or loses this game, I look at this game and I say, I'm impressed. He's actually playing at a very high level. Raynor doesn't have a crazy amount of creep, by the way. And obviously that has a lot to do with the triple oracle opening and Firefly pushing the creep back. But you don't often see Raynor in a 14-minute game like this and have so little creep. Yeah, man. This, uh, this Protoss is just keep... Keeps on getting better as he snipes at Overseer and he's going to deny this attempt of a knight is going up as well. And obviously, guys, Raynor looks rich, but don't be fooled. Raynor is one bad fight away from being in an insane amount of trouble because 1,400 gas is nowhere near enough to rebuild. I do think Raynor has a very good army, so he shouldn't take like an absolutely terrible fight. Yeah, it's a very impressive game by Firefly. Yeah. I mean, if I would ever go for a push like Firefly, I would A, mess it up 25 times with my Blinks, Force Fields, and Storms at the same time. And B, I would just be like, oh, I, I gotta end the game here, right? If I don't end the game, I'm dead. But he kind of made a very easy transition. Raider Man has the tiniest abduct of all time. Honestly, I think we could have killed that Mothership without that abduct. But does land an abduct, lost a couple of Corruptors and maybe a Viper in the process. But overall, decent trade. Firefly is doing a great job in just not allowing the, the Drop Lord and Nidus Chaos to spiral out of control. I love that wall-up, man. That wall-up between the natural and the third base, even though it looks a bit ugly. I'm sure there is a prettier wall-up possible, but I think that made his life a little bit easier. Another Nidus goes up. Firefly is about to see that it most likely happened over here on the high ground as the Lurkers have revealed themselves. Rainer is looking for... And Abduct and Firefly is looking for feedbacks. Also, the fact that we still have these oracles alive. <laughs> he missed the revelation. Happens to the best of us, guys. I feel like Rollers players never get enough kudos for nailing their revelations. We always talk about the great splits for the Terran players. Amazing surrounds from the Zerg. Nobody ever says nice revelation. And as you guys can see, it's not easy. Underrated ability of Rollers players to just nail that revelation over and over again. <laughs> as the Nidus is potentially going to go up in the back of the main and this could become a little bit problematic Firefly is going to send over the Tempest though and he has an Observer Tempest and Carry is good enough I like that he goes for the Nidus first because then he can just kill the Lurkers afterwards yeah the man is just not falling apart we do say nice storms but Nailing those revelations is not easy. Brawler's players do not get enough kudos for that. He's got a huge diameter. That's not true. He just missed it, mate. One of the best Brawler's players on the planet just missed one. If he can miss it, we should all get a little more props for nailing our revelation. Rainer has a decent bank now. Obviously, the 1,200 uh, mineral or gas that he had in the bank earlier, that scared me a little because it was like, if we take a bad fight now, maybe we're going to have an incredibly hard time in the rebuilding. At this point, I think Rainer is rich enough that he can get a little bit reckless. We can make a dive on a carrier or two, lose a bunch of Corruptors, and just rebuild them immediately. As that Observer is in range of the Spore, but he does keep that one alive as well. Nice to see a lovely little 18-minute game between these two after the very short affair between Clem and uh, Ragnarok. This game is now almost longer than the entire best of three was. And it's only game one. Oceanborn has given us quite a few of these games. Cero ended up playing a one-hour game against Australia. I don't mind long games as long as there is shit happening. I, I do dislike long games where they just sit at home and you have 15k, 15k in the bank, but this has been an action pack game with Raynor trying non-stop and Firefly just kind of having an answer for every single thing that Raynor is throwing at him. 
I do think that Rainer is obviously heading into a terrifying army as Firefly is going to drop a couple of early storms. Lands another big storm and all of these lurkers and another one. One Queen is going to try to keep that lurker alive and that lurker is going to stay alive for a very long time. But in the end it will fall. Where's the rest of Firefly's army? If Rainer is here with Queens, Lurkers, Corruptors and Vipers and Hydras, you should probably be here too. Gary is a little bit exposed. I think that's a bit of a mistake. The man does land a couple of feedbacks, but he's going to lose two out of three carriers very quickly. And the third carrier will fall as well. Firefly has done a lot of things right. And don't forget that he can obviously always go back to ground. He has a lot of gateways. He has great economy. Maybe this is the moment where we just want to send it with ground units. Two Immortals, a couple of High Templars and five Stalkers is not good enough. But one of the Oracles does finally get picked off. There's one more Tempest and one more Carrier, but those air units are going to get picked off immediately. Raynor is rebuilding 24 links, 12 Hydras, a bunch of Lurkers as well. As the Corruptors are very tanky boys. Raynor's upgrades are just better across the board. This is, by the way, where it's a real shame that Firefly only has plus one on its ground units. Makes eight Archons. All right. What Raynor needs to do right now, guys, is get Brute Lords or more Lurkers. It's actually going to be very hard to kill this many Archons with a couple of Links. A tiny forward Blink. Archons do have a hard time participating in the fight. Do we have Detection? I feel like we don't have Detection on most of those Lurkers. I think only one of them is revealed. Now the second one, the third one now as well. So Neonti does see all of the Lurkers, but it took a little while before he could take them out. Raynor is now rebuilding on 27 Hydras. As the Vipers could have been in trouble there, but Raynor is aware of that. So he's going to send them home in a different way. Firefly gets a base, but he's obviously lost so much to get this base. I'd love to see Reyna use a couple of those leftover Corruptors and morph them into Brute Lords. He's got a great Aspire now, guys. He can absolutely get Brute Lords, and I think this is a great moment to get some Brute Lords. Fighting with these Roaches and Hydras? I don't know, man. One or two Storms and we're actually in trouble. But I guess the Storms aren't there yet, so maybe it's okay. We are going to get some Brute Lords down the top right. When are those High Templars ready to Storm? Just Hydras is not that scary, honestly, for Firefly. He can deal with that. Broodlords, however, are going to be scary. It's hard to argue with that, Prof Nogi. I, I think I would agree with you. You can also maybe make a case for Clem. Even though Clem has been fantastic in the past in those Europe regionals, but obviously the Clem that we are currently watching is a different animal, right? Is doing it online, offline, in every single matchup. So I think you can make some sort of an argument for Clem too. Oh, yeah, everything is about Clem. Sorry, guys. Here I go again. Everything is always related to Clem. I can't help myself, guys. It's just all those posters in my living room. <laughs> Firefly has a whole bunch of High Templars, but obviously against Lurkers, it is hard to get these High Templars in range. Great job there by Reyna to pull back on the high ground. As the Corruptors are now going to look to use their lame ability called Caustic Spray. We have Battery Overcharge. Actually, the Stalkers might be able to kill these Corruptors, yeah. Reyna says, like, okay, I guess this is not the play, and it wasn't the play. <laughs> now, that's, that's the old Roddy grueling. The old Roddy hated Clem, but the new Roddy is obsessed with Clem. And makes everything about Clem. You're out of touch with the Twitch haters, mate. Is there a BBB tomorrow? Hell yeah. And there is a very good chance that one of the two nerds that you're currently watching is playing tomorrow night. The announcement may, uh, will be made later today. Uh, difficult for Firefly to hang in there at this point because Raynor has created the ultimate Zerg army. We've got Lurkus, we've got Broodlords. He's starting to consume the entire map. I think Firefly has played a great game, a fantastic game. Unfortunately for him, it's not going to be enough to win this one. But I still think he can be very proud of this performance. At least I am impressed. He has made a lot of great moves. He's also showing us that he's not like an F2 addict or a one trick pony. He has done a great job in splitting up his army. Surviving, transitioning. I really loved all of it. I think in the end, Rainer is still a tiny bit too good in a longer game like this. As Firefly says, F you, Roddy. 
I'm gonna try to prove you wrong and kill a couple lurkers, kill a couple brute lords, but I don't think it's enough in the end. These Tempest will fall, Firefly has lost his bottom left base and top right base. And I think that that is going to do it. These Hydras and Lurkers are now on top of our center base. And that's not something that Firefly can run into anymore. The man takes his hands off the keyboards. He knows that it is not going to go his way. But he played a great game. I'm very impressed. Showing us that he absolutely belongs in this tournament. And he's not done yet. Don't forget about game two. Maybe even a game three. Finally, Blinding Cloud goes down. Yes, this is obviously, I think, going to be the end. If Reyna sends over a few more units. Couple Stalkers, couple Zealots, one Tempest, one High Templar is not enough to deal with this swarm in all its glory. After 25 minutes of button clicking, video gaming, and a very nervous and stressed out Rainer, it is going to be Rainer who takes the 1 only. GG gets called. Fun game. Fun game here in the group stage of the Masters Coliseum 7. Both players are 1 and 1. Jeremy, man. I love you, but we are not gonna diminish anything of Clem's greatness. I am too much of a fanboy to let that slide. If it was that easy, every other Terran would do it. But Roddy, they are doing it. Fuck you guys. Do not try to be a wise ass. I was a hater, Jeremy, but that's old news. After yesterday, I am actually obsessed with Clem and everything is about Clem. And my entire world evolves around Clef. Firefly is quite good, but I don't think this IEM will be quite his yet. I mean, obviously, he's going to come into the tournament as one of the underdogs. But I believe that he can hold his own. What's his group again? Who does Firefly have to battle in the group, guys? I know that he's not in group D. That's Cyan. Is he actually going? He's in group C. That's the Terra. Is that the Terran group? No. The Terran group is group B. Top left side of Heartland. We are looking at the main base of Platinum Heroes Firefly. Played a great first game, but it was not enough against the man who they call Jack Frost in the streets these days. Basilisk Rainer. A one to one record for him. Lost to his teammate, Cero, in the opening series of the tournament. And won yesterday, or the day before, his second best of three versus Bian. Two days ago, I guess. You excited for the Roddy Copium at Katowice Top 8, not gonna lie? What kind of Copium are we talking about? The Protoss Copium? I mean, I have a bit of Copium there, but I am also... A tiny bit concerned. I wouldn't lie about that. You guys know that I have been praising Max Packs for a long time. That's in my eyes, by far and away, the best Protoss on the planet. And if the best Protoss player of the planet is not there, that means that our chances are reduced. Now, the second best Protoss player on the planet is there, but he's in a very difficult group, Group D. But I think he can do it. I believe in Hero, baby. Hero did good in Katowice last year. Hero does alright against some of these guys. I think our boy hero will look fine. I hope. I think. Dude, dude. By the way, Jeremy, I don't know if you're still here. I, uh, I love cell stream so much that now when I wake up in the morning and I go down, I have a coffee and I chill a little. I watched the rest of his VOD that I missed. And I saw this game on Side Delta, where he got cannon rushed and he's like just fuming so fucking hard. And he's like, I'm dead, right? I'm dead. I'm dead. Like, like he's got me. This asset, he's got me. And then he sends a reaper to the other side of the map and he kills like seven probes. And the change of demeanor and mood was just so perfect. He's like, oh, never mind. I'm actually fine. <laughs> I really enjoyed watching that game in the VOD. 
<laughs> Which groups are we talking about? I am Katowice groups, mate. If you go to uh, my Twitter or ESL's Twitter or actually anybody's Twitter or X, you can find them there. And if you don't use Twitter or don't want to visit X, then you can take a look at Liquipedia. If you press exclamation mark B, you're already on Liquipedia. And then instead of Masters Coliseum, you click on Katowice and you can see all the groups there. We can maybe also get a new comment in the chat, exclamation mark Katowice with a link. I'll do that after this game. Now, I was streaming still at that point slowly, but I did hear about it. And I did ask him about it. Cell is so mean to me at the moment. I don't know what it is. You know what he also said yesterday? I was just watching a game. And I didn't even say anything bad. I wasn't needling him. I wasn't trolling him. I just said something normal. And he just hits me with the... Ha! I like it when you start doing analysis. Where it's like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? You absolute dick. Like, what does he think? He, he thinks so little of me. This absolute fucker. This guy, man. This guy. So mean to me. Couple of links on the other side of the map. Working on the, the pilot in the Nexus. As the first Oracle has taken a crazy amount of damage. Got two kills, but I believe only one of them is a drone. Maybe not quite the start that Firefly was looking for. But hey, the good news is that the Nexus is still alive. We've got a Twilight Council going down. Yeah, I, I think the bunker really got to him. Cell will never forgive me for joking about his bunker and maybe making fun of him at the real home story company. That was so obviously sarcastic and trolling. That he shouldn't be bothered by it. I know, the bunker really got to him. Mm -hmm. Two drones do end up dying there. And a bit of lost mining time. Careful, Firefly. We cannot lose an Oracle. And he won't lose this one either, but... <laughs> Now we have two oracles, guys, that are on life support, on the verge of dying. The Twilight Council and the Forge are done. He's not using it, but he's going to use it now for blink and plus one. <laughs> if you look at that, you're like, ah, oh, this looks good for Firefly, right, Roddy? It's like, well, I actually would say that this is a victory for Raynor. And I know it sounds silly when Rain has only lost units and hasn't killed anything yet. But two out of uh, three oracles being this low on HP as we now have a tiny link run by as well. And the oracles actually somewhat low on energy. Uh, I, I don't like this start at all for Firefly guys. As he now ends up losing two probes. Could have been worse but... I mean maybe if we uh, just do a, a god tier job in positioning these oracles where they can still participate in the fight. But they are safe against the queens but it's so hard. To micro oracles and blink stalks at the same time when they are this fragile. He's the meanest to Ravi. I feel like at the moment, Cell is actually the meanest to me. It's just like he does not believe anything I say. I, I can literally come in and be like, watch a win in the game and be like, ah, oh, good job, Cell. And he's like, <laughs> fuck you, what did I do wrong? And it's like, nothing. I gave you a compliment. I enjoyed the game. Like, he is so paranoid about everything that I say at the moment. <laughs> and, like, I, I'm enjoying it, but it also makes me sad, because I mean well most of the time. Sure, I bully him from time to time, but most of the time I mean well. But at the moment, he cannot take anything from me. And I don't know where this comes from. But I don't know what I've done. I did troll him a few times, but... He was always okay with it. <laughs> but I haven't said anything bad, Pakistan Gate. Firefly is gonna create another beautiful wall up. <laughs> so there's years of DT abuse, but I don't really build DTs. I don't think I've played a decent amount of games against Upper Tree, but I've never built DTs against him. I do throw out the occasional jab on my own stream, but he doesn't even watch my stream a lot. I watch his stream way more than he watches mine. We have a friends with Husky. Friends is a big word. I worked events with him, and when we were at those events together, as one of the oracles, by the way, the low HP oracle gets picked off. At those events, we obviously spoke and stuff, but if you ask me, did I ever spend one second with Husky outside of a StarCraft event? No. He had his own friends, I had mine. 
His friends were cool. I had Benjamin Baker. It is what it is. It's okay. I wouldn't trade my Benny for the world. <laughs> Nice defensive link there by Firefly, making sure that he doesn't lose any stalkers. It's not a surround here by Reynek, can every single stalker make it safely to the other side? The answer is no, two of them got trapped, I believe two of them end up dying. He did save one of them with the War Prison pickup. Reynek's trip threat is looking so different this game. Oh, the item plus, by the way, six split on the Zerglings. I absolutely love the way that Reynek engaged this. This engagement deserves this engagement deserves Zerg victory. That was amazing. How quickly Reyna jumped on that army. How quickly he spread the Zerg links against the storms. And as game one, Firefly looked great and was competitive. And game two is a different ball game. It kind of feels like it is all Reyna over here. Reyna is obviously playing a very different style, making a lot more layer attack units. We have links. We have banes. We have a, a bunch of ravages in the mix. I actually think that you can attack those gates. By the way. Because if the Ravages would show up and you unpower four gateways, that is a problem for Firefly. I think that honestly has a lot to do with how much damage these Oracles took early. When the Oracles are so fragile, you're going to be a lot more cautious with them. And if you're more cautious with them, you don't have the Stasis Traps everywhere. You don't have the Revelations. And you don't necessarily know where the army. This is a very decent amount of Banelings. One man might even say, it is so many Banelings. We have Banes on the right side of the Nexus, Banes on the left side. 14 probes go down, Stalkers will go down. And with that, I kind of believe that Firefly might go down, or perhaps not. As he says, hey, if you're going to attack me, I'm going to attack you. And he wipes in a bunch of Zealots. That actually has good potential, guys. That is not bad at all. And since Raynor is spamming Ling Roche Ravager of two bases and now 75 drones, losing the spawning pool would be a bit of an issue. And Firefly is just non-stop expanding, and he's always rebuilding the probes as well that he's losing. That looked all very bad for Firefly for a split second, and now all of a sudden it's like, maybe it's playable? Question mark. Comes down to how many High Templars we have. We have a few High Templars on the high ground. The next attack for Raynor is now very important, guys. If this attack would fail, he's actually in trouble. And I'd be so impressed by Firefly. My Templars feel a little bit fragile at the moment. He's obviously waiting for Storm to be ready. I think Storm is ready on a couple of them. War Prism is still doing its thing on the other side of the map. Can Firefly keep the base safe? Can he keep the High Templars safe? Can he maybe repower that battery? That would be amazing. As Rain has 1200 minerals but no gas after he lost his spawning pool. He could only build roaches for a while and he has spent all of his gas on Banes. Banes will connect into Stalkers, the Immortal falls, a bunch of probes are going to go down as well. Firefly blinks forward on top of Roaches. We have Zealot still harassing on the other side of the map. Reyna does not get the uh, Nexus, guys. He gets eight probes, but he does not get the Nexus. And loses a lot of Roaches. Forward blink here, still Zealot's in the main. Firefly is such a gamer, man. Two Oracles still alive, and he has a thousand gas in the bank. He can actually build a bunch of new High Templars. Don't be here, Firefly. You've done so good, mate. Your army is very... Oh, that's maybe a tiny mistake, but he actually blinks back, so it's okay. He has High Templars there. This is still a very competitive game. And we could even say that maybe Firefly is winning it. If he gets one more pylon on that left side, and he gets like two cannons there. Reyna does not have Hive. Reyna does not have a crazy bank, not a crazy economy. The next attack is as important as the previous one. Are we gonna see some sick ass storms or will it still be Raynor who's going to clutch out this game? But if Raynor wants to win it, he really needs to win it soon. Maybe split up a couple links, get on top of the probes there. As Firefly does end up losing a lot of his uh, High Templars very quickly. The Zealots do not do anything at the moment on the other side of the map. Raynor should have links on the probes there, exactly. It's not many, but just a few probes is already good enough. And that's gonna force Firefly to evacuate this base. The Arkham Count is now three extra stalkers show up though. I think with those extra reinforcements, Firefly can push this army back one more time. This game is truly on a knife's edge and it's getting closer and closer and closer. And Firefly now has 83 probes, plus two attack, plus one armor. And it's going to... No, don't lose your oracles. He might, he might be winning, guys. As long as he doesn't do anything silly. Like, he can chill right now. Raynor is the one who needs to attack Firefly. 
Firefly just needs to focus on defending, get a few more Templars, Archons, batteries, cannons. And then you can harass a little bit with that prism. I think Firefly at the moment is winning, but Rainer wouldn't be Rainer if he doesn't still find a way to just close it out real quick. Obviously, it's still close. We don't have cannons and batteries here, though that is a little bit of a problem. Can the High Templars survive? One storm does land on a lot of the Banes, but most of the Banes do end up surviving. Rainer gets the High Templars, gets the Immortals as well. Extra Zelda to get warped in. Banings are gonna chase the probes all the way into the natural, into the third. A lot of very low HP units. Oh my goodness, this game is so fucking close. But the Archon dies, the Zealot will fall. The Stalkers are going to fall and the Bailings of Reyna do end up blowing 22 probes. And that in the end is damn good enough still for Reyna. Two cannons and a battery there on the left side. And that would have been a very difficult fight for Reyna. Well done. Still a great game. It looked dire at the beginning. But that War Prism really brought Firefly kind of back into it. And that was awfully close for a little while. Phone series. Reyna does get the 2-0 in the end. Man, that was uh, fun. That really became very fun and exciting out of nowhere. Interview with Reyna? No. I have more than enough Reyna in my life, mate. I don't need more. 2-0 in the end for the Italian Stallion. That means that we get ready for our third series of the day. A TVT. But it's an exciting TVT, guys, because there is elimination on the line here. We are going to watch a TVT between two players that are 0 and 2 in this tournament in best of threes. It's a must win series for both of them. If you lose here, you are eliminated. You will be the second player of Masters Coliseum 7 that is eliminated from this entire tournament. Oliver Abian, both are 0 2 at the moment. Must win best of three. Oliver. I kind of enjoy the four way guys but I know it's very difficult in uh, TVT but I still think it's kind of fun here we go I'll give you guys 10 minutes I think 10 minutes is kind of good correct a mistake in score what? Why? Oh, sorry. Yes, it's not beyond his money. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the scores are correct. The player was wrong. It's not beyond his money. Ah, close enough, guys. I mean, those names are very close enough. Starts with a B. There's an N. There's a Y. It happens. It happens. <laughs> but yes, Beyond played yesterday and Beyond beat Trigger. So Beyond is one and two. Now we're good, right?